Practicing new techniques and methods is such an important part of building your drawing skills with colored pencils. Today, I want to help you unlock your drawing potential and take your skills to a new level while practicing three different textures in this songbird drawing tutorial. I've been drawing songbirds for a long time and I've learned a lot over the years from drawing them. They're a fun and easy subject to draw with some great practice opportunities. This tutorial will be mostly time-lapse, but by the end of this demo, you'll have a better understanding of how to draw different textures on a bird and then transfer those skills to different subjects that have similar textures and surfaces. Maybe you'll even give this drawing a try. I'm going to start with gathering my pencils and I'll give a list of them in the description below, as well as the template of the bird. All the other materials will be listed here. Okay, so let's just get going. I'm going to start with outlining the bird, berries and leaves, in scarlet red and may green. And I'm going to outline the eye and the front black feathers with the black. After that, I'm going to use a kneaded eraser to eliminate the graphite so it doesn't muddy up my colors. I'll start the main drawing by working on the eye. I want to create a reddish brown color, so I'm going to start with scarlet red and fill in as a base layer all areas except the pupil, the highlight, and the reflection. I'm making sure my pencil is super sharp. I've edited out all the times I've sharpened my pencil, but it's usually about every 20 to 30 seconds, depending on what I'm drawing, because I want to keep my pencil, as I said, quite sharp. Then I'm using black to deepen the area around the eye, making it really crisp and clean. This will help to keep the illusion of the shiny area of the eye. I'm working slowly and precisely to make sure that the two lines are nicely separated and then adding black to the pupil as a base layer. When I work on dark subjects such as this eye, I always do a darker base of the main color that I'm working with. I keep building the form by shading along the outer edge of the eye and then gradually fading and blending that out as I work towards the center. This is going to create a more three-dimensional form. I'm now building the details around the outer eye, adding a layer of cadmium orange over the area I just completed. This adds more visual interest and layers of colors in a transparent way. I add in the green over the layers as green is a complementary of red and will neutralize the reds and oranges. It helps to gray it down and create a more realistic eye color. I'm continuing to build the form, adding more values along the edge. Values are the light and darkness of colors and helps to create a three-dimensional effect. Now, working with the dark red, I'm going over everything again, making sure that the edges are blended dark to light towards the center. Careful small scribble laydown is the best technique for these areas. Adding a small amount of gray over the reflection area and layering that with the purple violet again is a way to create visual interest. You don't want to keep it all one color. I'm going to build the black on the pupil just to make it a little bit more solid and stronger looking. I go very slow on layering as it gives me better control over the drawing process. This means building up a bit at a time. It doesn't mean I draw slowly, just lots of layers and very light each time. So I can check and make sure it's correct and three dimensional looking. I'm using the dark red along the outer edges as well and I'm going to layer in some black and gray as I build more layers for the reflection, making sure I also keep adding more of the black around the edges. And the eye is about finished. I'll add solvent to the eye at the end of the drawing. Next, I'm going in with the yellow and I'm adding a base layer over the whole bird except for the eyes and black areas of the feathers. I'm also adding the base of yellow to the leaves and berries as this color will work well with all the other colors I'm using. After I finish the base of yellow, I'm going to start working on the beak. The beak is another surface that I treat differently. I don't see this as a shiny surface like the eye. It's similar to dull plastic, so I generally never use a liquid solvent in these areas, but instead I use a softer blending with a blending pencil. What I've always done as a professional color pencil artist is work with the paper to enhance surfaces and textures. I've referred to it as reading the paper and the subject. I'm not a firm believer in completely eliminating all paper twos. I want the surface I'm working on to be a tool and part of the drawing process so I can select areas that I blend or work heavily or lightly. 
For the eye, it needs a solvent of some kind because I want it to look slick and wet and to not show any paper tooth. For the beak, it's something different. It's an in-between area. It's not quite soft and not quite slick like an eye. I want it to look solid but not super shiny, so using the paper tooth is one way I do this. I've added a layer of orange and now I'm using the purple to help build the shadows. I've also jumped over to the black feather areas and add some purple. Avoid just laying down black. It's a very flat, boring color and needs a bit of something to add visual interest. The purple as a base will help that. I'm also adding gray as well. This is going to help to build the areas and create a soft reflection appearance on the beak and more visual interest in the black feather area. Working with the dark red, I keep adding more and more values. I always teach my students to strive to get at least four to five value ranges on their work, even with white subjects. And the more you get, the more your work looks three-dimensional. I highly suggest working with a value scale if you're not familiar with what values are. They're such a wonderful tool to have for any beginner color pencil artist. I'm using the scarlet red to keep building up the layers, adding it very lightly as I go about doing this. I've jumped into using the crimson red while building up the values and really working the color so that it's three dimensional. I'm going back to using the orange and I'm building the values further. I'm also using the orange as a blender, so it's really helping to blend all of the other colors underneath it together and I'm pressing a little bit harder as I do. So not as light, but just blending as I go along. Here, I'm using a Prismacolor blending pencil at this point, one of my favorite. And you can see as I'm working that there's a little bit of tooth left. That tooth actually is helping to create texture, an important part of all my work. I'm adding in some Scarlet Red at this area. This is the Purple Violet and I'm using it to build form. I'm also adding a layer of some white over the reflective areas and different parts of the beak. Scarlet Red is added and blended more, making the subject a lot richer. I'll jump between all the colors pretty fast at this point because I'm just building up the values in the form and working darker along the edges and the bottom of the beak. I go a little bit darker and then I'm going to fade and blend that out towards the center where it's a lot lighter. And that's it. So you can see the differences between the beak and the eye. That the eye is quite solid and the beak still has some of the tooth in it. Now you need to also remember that not all beaks are like this. And some of them might have a little bit of shine to it or might be a little bit more solid looking. This beak on this bird happens to be a little bit more on the dull side. So take a look at your subject before you make a decision on what kind of blending you want to do because some birds might actually benefit with a little bit of solvent. At this point, I'm using my black to start putting in the small feathers around the face. I'm drawing very small lines. And this is a third textured surface, feathers. For feathers, I want to see the tooth of the paper quite a bit and as much as possible, use it to enhance the softness of them. The small feathers around the face are created by a type of flick of the pencil. I create them by starting the line with a bit of pressure on the paper then, as I pull the pencil along the line, I pull it up fast and lighten the pressure as I do this. This creates a tapered line. I keep using this technique all over the bird to draw the feathers. At the same time, I also follow the contour of the subject so the tapered lines are curved or are different directions. I'm going to put in a type of hard scribble around the eye. This is a little bit of a different texture and it's a little bit harder but also creates a little bit of lightness. I won't fill this as solid as I want to use the paper again to create highlights. Remember, use your paper as a tool. You don't need to eliminate all evidence of the surface. I'm going to use the same technique on the back part of the eye, tiny flicks creating tapered lines. Around the front of the eye, I'm drawing very small solid lines. These are a combination of tapered lines and solid lines and I move back and forth so that they create this open appearance with white showing through. Working underneath the beak, I set in a thin black line to follow the edge of the beak emphasizing the shadow underneath it. And that I'll work with tapered lines again, but a lot longer than the top of the beak. Following the form, I do this to create the illusion that the bird is curved. I draw the whole side of the bird this way in black so you can see the little tapered lines are going all over the place in different directions. Again, it's to create the illusion that the feathers are laying down naturally. I keep layering the lines and I'm making sure that my pencil is very sharp all the time so that I get a good three-dimensional effect. 
What I want is to make it look like there's some shadows and highlights. I'm making sure that the pencil is nice and sharp, as I've said, so that this gives me more control over what's happening, meaning that the lines are more defined and that there's some gaps in between. I tell this to my students all the time. Keep your pencil sharp, and if you're working with a handheld pencil sharpener, change your blades once a month or even more than that. I'm using the crimson now and I'm working with these tapered lines again and you'll notice that they curved around the top of the head. Once I've worked a little bit with the crimson, I'm going to be adding in some orange and I want to create an effect of it being layered. So I'm putting a fair amount of the orange with the crimson on the top of the head, making these long tapered lines and blending them all together. And now working with the same long tapered lines in the orange of the body, I'm going to keep building and you'll notice again that they're slightly curved but they're quite long. So quite different than the area up around the face. And generally this is the way that birds are drawn. Once I've worked a little bit with the orange, I'm gonna come in with the scarlet red again, and I'm gonna add that throughout the body, adding it around different areas, again, with these long tapered lines that are slightly curved. Again, this is to help create more of a three-dimensional effect. And by adding in a darker color over the orange, it's going to make it look like there's color on top and there's color underneath. As I work with the backside of the head with taper lines, they're slanting and curved more, going downwards. Using the scarlet red is really helping me to build up a little bit more of the form of the head around the eyes. And then, right underneath that, I'm going to go in with a longer tapered line. In this part of the head, I'm going to be doing tiny little lines with the scarlet red. This is right underneath the eye. This is again to give the illusion that there's some really small feathers and I'm also doing it quite dark along the very edge of the tapered line as I flick it out to the end. And then right underneath this, I'm gonna go in with some very long tapered lines. On the back side of the head where the crown is, I'm using the crimson to lay out the areas of the long wispy feathers and keeping the spaces of them very, very uneven and quite far apart. This is gonna create more of a natural feel. I keep working with the crimson and any time that I'm around the eye, I wanna make sure that the feathers are very small because generally that's what you see on songbirds where they have very small feathers around the eye area. Then as you move away from the center of the eye or the eye area, the feathers become longer. That's an important and interesting point. If you're interested in doing songbird drawings of any type, that area around the eye always needs to be done in a very, very short and small feather. And as you move away from the eye area, they become a lot longer. I'm still working with the scarlet and I'm just building up more of the values. So I want a lot of white in between and making sure that my pencil is always sharp. And this will help me create more of a three dimensional effect. Working with lots of curved taper lines, I keep building around the different parts of the body. I'm adding a little bit of purple violet and then jumping back into the scarlet red. Keep building up the body form and dimension. There's all sorts of different feathers and I'm just giving the illusion, but I'm not being 100% realistic with this drawing. I'm just creating lots of different textures and just having a lot of fun. Using the purple violet around the eye and continuing to build up the values, I'm going to be using mauve purple around the eye also, which is a bit darker than the purple violet and with the dark red also being used to build up the values and to make it look more interesting. So you can see as I keep adding more layers, the bird is starting to look a little bit more realistic around that eye area. It's great fun and I really hope that you give this a try. Using the dark red around the back side of the eye and tapering of the feathers on the top of the head, I want to make sure that you see lots of the colors underneath. I'm going to be doing a lot of jumping back and forth between the purple and the reds along this part of the head. I'm trying hard to make sure that we get a good amount of values and the dark red is going to help with that. Also, I use the darker colors around the neck, working at giving the appearance that the feathers are slightly turned up or ruffled. I'm going to be pulling the crimson down in the area, working between the orange and the scarlet red. 
At this point, what I'm doing is adding in some gray along the edge. And all that's doing is just adding a little bit of visual interest and a little bit of highlight. Adding in black, keeping my pencil nice and sharp, and it makes it look like it's three-dimensional. I've talked about this before, but it's an important part of a good drawing process, and especially when you're working with a subject like these birds. At this point, I'm adding in the mauve. Remember, you don't want to stick with just one color. So you want to use multiple colors in your layering. This is again going to add visual interest. And because this is a limited palette, adding a little bit more colors is just going to make it that much more fun and interesting. I'm just working with the dark red at this point, still building up more values and more dimension. At this point, the bird is just about complete. And as I mentioned, I'm going to go in with the solvent around the eye at the end. Working on the berries, I'm going to treat them all about the same way. Crimson as a start over the yellow base layer and then build up the values by fading out the colors to the highlights with the dark sepia used to create values. The little details on the top of the berries is done with the dark sepia and I'm going to add in some of the purple violet over the berries as well as mixing it in with different reds, scarlet, crimson and the dark red. I'm going to add a little tiny bit of orange into the whole mix and then also add some yellow. It's really important to know that if you use a darker colored pencil as an outline for the berries or any subject, to blend that line into the rest of the berry. You'll see that I've done the dark line a few times, but I make sure that I blend it together. This will help to make sure that your image looks three-dimensional and not flat. The rest of the drawing is about completing the berries and leaves. I jump between the leaf and the berries as I work. Like the berries, the leaf will be drawn with the same color combinations. I'll layer the main green over the yellow base and build the edges of the leaf with purple and dark sepia. Then I'll mix in a layer of the light green. And on top of that, I'm going to put yellow so each of the leaves will be treated the same way. Dark sepia and purple violet will be used for the veining on the leaves. And I'm going to be blending and mixing those together with the rest of the color. So you'll see that as I work on each of the leaves that I'm going to introduce a darker color and mix it in with the greens and yellows. If you're interested in getting a longer version of this tutorial, it's going to be available on my website at the end of December. And the final piece that we just want to add is a little bit of solvent to the eye and to some of the berries. Here you have it, a cardinal with green foliage and red berries, a perfect image for this time of the year. I've really enjoyed showing you some of the tips I've used when drawing birds. Please don't forget to subscribe and give me a like if you've enjoyed this video. And leave me a comment. I would be glad to answer your questions. Thanks for joining me.